This lecture is about CT scan of the ankle and foot trauma and findings not to miss. I'm Jeff Riley from Stanford University. Why do we do CT of the ankle and foot? We do it to detect fractures. We want to be able to describe the fracture, which is helpful to determine if the fracture is surgical or not. If it is surgical, it's helpful to define the anatomy for surgical planning and finally for treatment complications. Lateral view of the ankle showing a fracture or not. There is a fracture there and that's a posterior malleolar fracture. Posterior malleolar fractures are easy to miss radiographically and they're also easy to underestimate. Here is an example of a CT which more clearly shows that the fracture is displaced. Malleolar fractures are important to recognize because they have an effect on stability. In this image to the left, you'll see a uh, displacement of the ankle with numerous fractures, and it's very easy to overlook a, a uh, posterior malleolar fracture. The next image you'll often see is within a uh, cast, and so therefore it's also easy to miss the posterior malleolar fractures. So a posterior malleolar fracture, uh, if the fragment is about one quarter to one third of the tibial articular surface that will frequently go on to surgery and CT is key for this. Here's some other malleolar fractures. The reason we want to describe all of them is because they may all be fixed. One special type of fracture of the ankles, the pylon fracture. These are easy to see but they're also easy to underestimate. These involve the horizontal surface of the distal tibia with proximal extension. And if there's a fracture that's isolated to the posterior malleolus, but it does cover more than about a third of the articular surface, that's still considered a pylon fracture. Another case, where is the fracture? So we'll give a little more contrast to identify the fracture. Now it's visible, and here's another hint. CT clearly shows the lateral Taylor process fracture, otherwise known as a snowboarder's fracture. Radiographs, these radiographs is a little easier to see. These can be, or these are avulsion. They can be large and comminuted. They can lead to arthritis because of the extension into the posterior facet. Uh, if they're non-displaced, usually treated with non-weight bearing. If they're large, they can be surgically fixed, and they may go on to non-union. Some more examples using CT of the snowboarder's fracture, lateral Taylor process fracture. Calcaneal fractures are also something we see and uh, use CT for. Uh, these are common fractures. They can have a poor outcome, and CT is very important for description of these fractures. So um, when we describe the calcaneal fracture on CT, we want to talk about which facets or joints are involved. And we want to talk about whether the anterior process of the calcaneus is involved and whether there's soft tissue entrapment. So just a little anatomy, the middle facet right here in the lateral projection, the posterior facet in the coronal plane, middle facet, posterior facet. Here's an example of um, 3D image of the uh, CT showing perineal nerve entrapment from a calcaneal fracture. So is there a fracture here and where is it? Hard to see on radiograph, CT shows this very small anterior process of the calcaneus fracture, and um, these are generally due to the origin of the extensor digitorum brevis or, or the bifurcate ligament. They're usually going to be non-operative, and they're usually small, and they can be treated with protective weight bearing with the boot. Um, they're usually non-displaced. If they're large or comminuted, um, they can lead to arthritis. Example of a foot radiograph, question, injury, or not. Here's a up close of the area and if you follow these two lines you'll see that there's incongruity there between the cuneiforms and the metatarsal bones, an example of a Lisfranc injury. There it is there, a little fracture. Usually you're going to identify these with weight bearing radiographs or MR but on a trauma patient they often can't bear weight and they can also be radiographically occult and um, finally the CT may be done for other reasons for trauma and then you have to make sure you look there a little anatomy here, the um, Lisfranc is considered or is broken down into three segments, the dorsal, the interosseous, and the plantar. The interosseous is the one that we usually see. The injuries can be divided into low impact, otherwise known as a midfoot sprain. They're common uh, in 
athletic injuries and they could be overlooked on weight-bearing x-rays. Uh, the high impact are the kind we call the fracture displacement. They're seen in MVAs and they can cause post-traumatic arthritis. So you have the um, high impact obvious fractures and then the subtle low impact fractures. Another fracture that you may come across but uh, somewhat unusual is the Seidel's fracture. It's um, often called a sprain, yeah, clinically that's why it could be missed, and it's an avulsion or direct injury and it's a posterior Taylor process. This can lead to chronic pain and, inst pain and instability if it's not uh, identified. Uh, flexor halysis longus entrapment. Here's an example of the 3D CT showing a tarsal tunnel impingement which results in a fibrosis and pain. The fifth metatarsal fracture is something that's pretty easy to see but sometimes it, the terminology can be confusing. If you think of the base of the fifth metatarsal in three zones it can be helpful. Number one, the first zone is considered the tuberosity avulsion. The second zone is the intermetatarsal joint, and this is where the true zone Jones fracture occurs. This is a non-union risk region. The uh, third is the shaft stress fracture, also at risk for non-union. So the true Jones fracture involves that second intermetatarsal joint zone. As far as treatment of it also can be broken down into the zones. Number one, the first two rosity is treated with a boot, while zones second and third are often treated non-weight bearing. Or if it's an athlete that wants to return to play, sometimes these will be fixed with uh, screw fixation. Soft tissues are also visible on uh, CT scans of the foot and ankle, and they're easy to overlook when you're trying to describe fractures. So the MR to the left is used for reference here. The middle, uh, or the second image, is the soft or the bone or uh, kernel algorithm, which uh, all the soft tissues look pretty similar. But when you look at the soft tissue kernel algorithm, you can then identify the tendons fairly easily. An example of a fracture there of the fibula, and that tendon. Here's the MR for reference. That uh, peroneus tendon is entrapped within the fracture of the fibula. So this is an example of tendon entrapment, something you can see on CT. Another example of entrapment here, the 3D images show you this bone fragment overlying the tendon. The MRI is for reference. Note that the posterior tibial tendon location is visible on the soft tissue um, algorithm for the CT and if you look to the image to the right you'll see dislocation of the posterior tibial tendon a finding that would be fairly easy to overlook if you weren't specifically looking at the tendons. Another example this time the tendon approximates the fracture we don't know if it's entrapped. In a situation like this I would recommend just mentioning the location and the proximity of the fracture to the tendon. Some other examples of entrapment, posterior tibial tendon. Here it is. Following it down, you'll see the tendon between the fracture fragments. Other tendons can also be entrapped. Here's the flexor digitorum longus tendon that is entrapped within the fracture. Other soft tissue um, important things to look for are the arteries. And the MR there is for reference. Um, the arteries can be difficult to see on a non-contrast, so you have to just keep in mind where they like to live. Anterior, posterior lateral, posterior medial. So on the non-contrast CT, we do see the fracture. We don't know exactly where the artery is relative to the fracture. However, here we have a CTA, and that shows that the artery is entrapped. And there's the 3D image showing entrapment of the anterior tibial artery. In summary, there are numerous fractures to look for, especially in the foot. And an important thing to always keep in mind is to look at the soft tissues, including the tendons and the arteries. Thank you.